you're kind of rededicating yourself to try to get into the Olympic roster, or is this just like just another opportunity for you to get better? Um, that's Kyle Russell walking right through the shot. Very well. <laughs> so the first thing that I thought of was actually something that I that's a restaurant that is not very popular. Okay. And I don't want to shout it out. Well, first of all, great to finally meet you. Uh, yeah, shout nice out to, to the Auto well. System Group. Yeah, I'm the last one to meet you. And I remember uh, this is like a couple years ago when you guys were still forming Auto System mm -hmm. and you were exploring all the the goodness of volleyball, playing grass, building a business. You guys were talking about like the future of the professional, and you were kind of in and out of the USA gym. Yeah. And you were wondering yeah, like, yeah, yeah. is this for me? Yeah. And at that time, I remember you saying like, I actually just want to enjoy playing volleyball. Yes. And then all of a sudden, you get picked up by Turkey. Yeah. You play really well yeah. and you're on the US team now and you're making an impact here and you're like, you and Mike are like the guys now, it seems like for the setting. Yeah, Mike is definitely the guy. And uh -huh. then uh, myself and Josh Twininga is another green setter. Yeah, Josh uh, is awesome for sure. We're kind of just in the mix, but yeah. we just tag team back and forth and uh, Mike is kind of the head honcho and so uh -huh. we're his supporting cast <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> but yes, yes. So is that a conscious shift for you? Like you're kind of rededicating yourself to try to get into the Olympic roster or is this just like just another opportunity for you to get better? Well, that's a great question. Yeah, it's been an interesting road. Um, that's Kyle Russell walking right through the shot. Very, uh, very aware, very conscious, very polite, <laughs> man. Yeah, it was conscious. I actually was not planning on it and then uh, Matt Furbringer gave me a call and, and we spoke in depth about a lot of things and I had spoken to guys on the team how they felt about it. I'm just trying to get a pulse on, on, yeah. on where, how the team was and, yeah. and how it would be if I were to come back. And yeah. everyone was really, really kind about it and very welcoming and yeah. very supportive and, and encouraging. Yeah. But I think that was a big part of it for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, my last run in here was, it was like a very interesting run, to mm -hmm. say the least. And then I went I went overseas, got some years under my belt as just a setter. I feel like I've, I've progressed and now I'm definitely in a, in a mindset of trying to uh, be a part of the team, be a part of something special. Yeah. And then on top of that, obviously working with guys like Micah, yeah. Javier Weber, who's a, who's a great setting mm -hmm. coach, was just the cherry on top. I was I was stoked about it, and yeah. right now I'm feeling great about just being able to be in the gym with them and, and get better because yeah. I still have a lot of meat on the bone. Just yeah. being a spiker my whole life, uh -huh. and now finally getting to specialize. Um, it's super exciting, and I'm having a blast. Join our Elevate Yourself membership community to help you stay motivated on your own journey and connect with me on a deeper level. You'll receive exclusive perks for members only, such as loyalty badges and custom emojis that you can use when commenting on videos, behind the scenes content, members only polls, early access to special videos, and live stream Q&A sessions where you can ask me anything you want. Being a member is also a great way to connect with other hardcore fans and directly support this channel so I can keep making great content for you. So click that join button below and take your Elevate Yourself experience to the next level today. I feel like that's kind of been your blessing because you've played so many positions. I mean, 6'2 at UCLA mm -hmm. and then you probably played every position under your dad, just whatever yeah. your club needed. And then I can, I can see how that can muddle, I guess, just a, like a, a vision for where you wanted to go, like yeah. just kind of like a volleyball searcher, like yeah, as yeah, soon yeah. as college ended. Yeah, which is why at times I felt like I was having more fun maybe in a, in a position of like grass or yeah. beach where you're kind of just a, a volleyball player, you yeah. know, like uh -huh. there's no specialization. Yeah, It's a blessing and a curse and then in the beginning, and then you kind of, as time goes on, hindsight's 2020, you, you realize it's a blessing, you know? For so, sure. Um, just realizing that and realizing how my love for the game is like more than ever, mm -hmm. just because of the fact that I, I don't have any burnout. Like, yeah. I haven't been doing this very long. That's beautiful. And then being able to like dive into it and really specialize and learn a lot yeah. about the setting position, which is a very complicated, in-depth oh, yeah. position to say the least, maybe yeah. the most, yeah. probably the most. Yeah. And just have like so much just to learn and, so it's been a blast. Like, yeah. And I don't know what it would be like if I was setting since I was eight years old. Yeah. If I would still have this much enthusiasm to come into the gym every day. That's so true. So yeah, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And I really love how, how it's how it's shaping out. Yeah. You you actually look very happy on the court. And I don't mean that just to be trite or like 
facetious, but you actually look like the same joy you have when you're playing your grass. Like it looks like you have that joy. That's like good. in your warm ups, you're smiling. Yeah. And yeah. it's not because like you're goofing off, but there's just this joy for you to be on the team and be on the national team stage. Yeah. And then you put on the fierce, the fierce eyes when it's time to compete. For sure. Um, for sure. But yeah, it's really great. So I'm looking forward to, to the future of your setting on the USA. Thanks very much, man. It's nice to meet you. Yeah. You yeah. too. Oh, one more question. Yeah. I always ask all the Hawaiian guys, what is what's something you crave when like you're in Turkey or any other? was one food from Oahu that like, I need this now. Okay. I need my parents to mail it to me now. So the first thing that I thought of was actually something that I, that's a restaurant that is not very popular. Okay. And I don't want to shout it out. Okay. Because in Hawaii, when you shout things out, you end up waiting in a line. All right. Or not getting your, what you're used to, you know? So yeah. that's like on the down low. Okay. But if you come, we'll hit it up. Okay. Uh, I'll delete the text. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> you exactly, I'll delete exactly. the text. Vanish mode. And then, um, but yeah, my mom sends me lihimui. A lot, a okay. lot of lihimui. I got Sour Patch Kids right here. Nice. And so I throw lihimui on everything, Sour Patch Kids. Uh, a lot of gummies that you can find in Europe, mm. and I can just immediately make them like home. Oh, that's so awesome. So it's a really nice, it's a really nice like topping. Okay. Instead of like running out of something I can cook once. Yeah. So I would say lihimui powder is my go-to. Okay. Yeah. I'll keep that in mind. Yes, sir. All right. All right Let me, I'll take this. Yeah, take this. Nice but, to meet you. Yeah, you too.